Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and Friends of Baylor. First, I have a correction. So one of our viewers last week uh, pointed out that when I talked about the mRNA vaccines, I said that they were not very effective at preventing infection, uh, but were very effective at preventing serious disease and death. Uh, and, and he was correct. I, what I wanted to say was they're not as good as preventing infection versus serious disease. Uh, it, over the lifespan, they have been coming down in terms of the ability to infect, uh, prevent infection. They're now about two to three-fold benefit. So uh, if you're vaccinated, you do get a two or three-fold reduction in uh, infection rates. If you look at it, the height of Omicron, the difference for mortality was like 15-fold. So the, it's a much bigger benefit for serious disease and, and uh, mortality, but it does help. My point still uh, that it, it's important is that we want eventually to get a vaccine that prevents all infections. Anyway, that was, thank you for that comment. I appreciate it. So this week, what a treat, what a treat. <laughs> We're going to go on a field trip together. Uh, we are heading off to uh, uh, what, is, uh, what is known as the uh, Baylor College of Medicine Biotech Academy at Rusk Middle School. Now, it, let me explain why, uh, why we do this. Back in 1972, uh, Dr. DeBakey thought it was a good idea for us to help underrepresented minorities in medicine by actually forming high school and, and getting them uh, prepared to compete in college and medical school. And we formed a magnet school called the DeBakey High School for Health Professions that really focused on students who were interested in science and medicine. That program was so successful, we started uh, eight additional high schools in the southern part of, the te of Texas working with the, uh, those school districts. Uh, and those high schools are focused on science, medicine, and technology. And so our role really is to create the curriculum to uh, uh, teach a summer class for teachers to help them understand the curriculum. Uh, and then we provide a STEM a specialist of instruction at each school to make sure that they stick to the curriculum. So that's our role, but these uh, schools have been incredibly successful. Based on the success of our high schools, in 2013, the Houston School District invited us to transition a very low achieving middle, middle school into the Baylor College of Medicine Academy at James D. Ryan Middle School with a focus on science and medicine. And it, interestingly enough, in this school, they're selected by lottery, not by testing in. And it was so successful that three years later, the, uh, the Houston School District asked us to do, uh, create a similar program in another middle, middle school. And in 2016, we opened the Baylor College of Medicine Biotech Academy at Rusk Middle School. Uh, and the inaugural class began uh, sixth graders in 2016, and this year marks their graduation through high school. And out of that first class that entered, eight students are valedictorians or salutatorians of their high schools. These students, I mean, are really remarkable. They've done ter terrifically well. And I just thought it'd be fun to go visit them and bring you along. So today we're gonna go on a field trip to Rust Middle School. Any other reviews of food? That's burgers. It. Burgers are good. It's interesting. So, burgers are interesting. That's what <laughs> As you can see on the wall, these are some of the banners that we've won from HOSA. So HOSA stands for Health Occupation Students of America. There are more flags hanging here than any professional sports team in all of Houston. Do that. He's our head of genetics. Oh, that's cool. Very cool. And there I made it. I made it. Finally, I made it. Right. So what did you present? I That was actually mine, where I presented a glucose monitor device. You're kidding. Just, <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. You won first place. Yeah. He goes, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Which one? Are, are you one of these flags? Oh, I'm this one. Well, me and Lucy. Did. Babies in the womb and surgeries on that. And so, yeah, we created a presentation about that. Yeah. Right here, we're coming up on our outdoor class is basically a space where teachers can take their students out. We have a couple of cocoons out there. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of butterflies? Monarch. Monarch, Monarch butterflies. So you have milkweed? Yeah. You know, yeah. that's yes. what they're preferred yeah. in. That's something I know all about. <laughs> I studied entomology in oh. Michigan in college okay. when I was there, and I know everything there is to know about bugs. <laughs> Yes, I have a question. So, uh, what do you want to be uh, when you grow up? Probably a lawyer or a veterinarian. 
Uh, and what are you what are you planning on doing? I was planning on doing. I was planning on being a plastic surgeon. Um, well, I wasn't really sure, but I want to practice law. Robotics. A robotics engineer. Yeah. Okay. Right. And what 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 do you want to do? I want to be either a detective or an immigration lawyer. You're smiling already. <laughs> you want to be a comedian. He's going to be a comedian. Uh, uh, no, I want to go into law. In the law. Okay, a lot of lawyers. Marine biology. You, you haven't changed your mind since the last time we talked? No. <laughs> Great. It sounds like, uh, you know, you guys are all well on your way. You've got good thought plans. What can I answer for you? Do you have any questions of me? Tape a little thing every week uh, on COVID. It's been COVID the last three years. And, my, and our dog, my dog Lily, is very much involved. Oh, this is Lily. This is Lily. I have a weenie dog too. Do you long hair? <laughs> and I didn't know what I wanted to be, so I went, you know, I did science in, in college. So that's how I got to medical school. And it turns out, once I got in, I loved it. But, you know, I didn't start off thinking medicine was something I was going to do. Yes. yes. What were some of the major hardships you went to in becoming a doctor? So, uh, I think the, you know, the hardest part about being a doctor is what I just said, that transition to not being, you know, thinking about what you want to do and thinking about what other people want to do. And then it's a hard, it's a hard and long time. I mean, there's a lot to learn. Yeah. yeah. How were you sure you wanted to like, keep going where you were going, like the doctor and stuff? Why did I keep going? Well, that's a, actually, that's a really good question because every, at every step of the way, you, you know, at, in all of your careers, there will be moments when you go like, why am I doing this? And, and, and that really is a big deal. You might have that now when you're studying for something where you go like, I really don't want to be doing this. Then you probably shouldn't be doing it. I love my job. I wake up every day. I can't wait to get to work. So if you don't feel that, you should probably find something that you feel that way about. Are you going to show me your, your boards? Yes. Okay, come on, let's go. Show me your boards. And then since psychology is one of the driving factors in improving human health, Very that true. caused a lot of patients. In a lot of these trials that are placebo controlled, you know, and that's a, in a clinical trial, you have one medicine versus a placebo. Mm -hmm. The trials are usually blinded to the physician, so the physician doesn't know either. Blood pressure monitor? Yeah. And many people use it if it comes to doctors, people at home. You sit down first and then you put it on your wrist, uh -huh. on your left wrist, and then you have to place your hand yep. in a certain angle and then press the button. And then 102. That's not as healthy, but it's still average. Mm -hmm. So it's n you're not at risk. Blood pressure in the cuff and then you do the wrist, wrist cuff? Oh. and then you compare the two. You got a lot of rubber bands in there. What, what, what yeah. is the moving parts? This one will, you have to hold this in place. And oh, then it rotates the curve. It rotates itself. <laughs> I won first place. Yeah. That's really good. The perinatologist specializes in the prenatal care of women with high risk pregnancies. So this is our board about it. We actually have babies that have congenital anomalies. <laughs> this one looks like uh, a... So we can like lift them. This one has club foot. Look at that. Look at this. Isn't that amazing? Have you... The ultrasounds today, you can see the face of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's kind of, did you get a chance to see any of that? We got that ultrasound from our teacher. Oh, okay. She's pregnant. She's pregnant. And that was her baby. Now that's commitment. <laughs> so this is very important. So you need to make sure that people see that that, re that replaces that sometimes. Okay. Yeah, that's so cool. And then, so this one has a, a lower pitch. This one has this one has a really high frequency sound. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be okay. What could have caused this? Well, we'll need to run a few more tests. But it seems to me that you're at a borderline risk for heart disease. But instead of eating a nutritious meal, we would go out to a local fast food restaurant and eat there. <laughs> but since I got busy working to support my mom and I, it's been really hard for me to quit. Smoking is one of the biggest factors of risk to your heart disease. <coughs> for example, instead of getting fried nuggets, you can try to get grilled ones. For exercising, I know you have a busy schedule, but maybe you can take a quick walk when you're asking for less overnight shifts while you give your body a chance to heal. Definitely. Like I said, my health is very important to me. This is our 
anatomy lab, here 6th, 7th, and 8th graders can work on hands-on dissections and many of the displays around the room can actually be used during their classes. So this person actually needed a stent because yes. they had an aortic coarctation. Um, aortic coarctations are usually presented at birth, which can also be known as a congenital anomaly. Look at that. They do a cross section, just but man, that is so cool. So, and then they wrap a mesh around it yeah. so that it's actually a metal hand mesh. It just expands. And we get so Harry had Harry had some plaques. When the left ventricle gets damaged, then people have real problems, and uh, most of the plaques. Better about that. <laughs> this is great. Yes, you do. <laughs> All right, so you create your own DNA sequence. Don't feel any pressure whatsoever. Yes, sir. This is 1969, 1970. Oh, these are when the event happened. When yeah, it happened. Oh, okay. that was a good one. All right. You guys will probably never forget this, but you went to middle school in the middle of a global pandemic. Yes. yes. So, uh, what did you all learn from that pandemic? So, I would definitely say like misinformation is really easy to spread. People were kind of over exaggerating it, yep. and then it was like, is this true? Is this not true? What measures are we actually needing to take? And it turns out there's a lot of science around misinformation. So the more misinformation that people keep just saying, people believe it. Uh, I had to get used to like not being able to like, you know, interact with other people, or I had to adapt to doing online school. Like, oh, this thing happened over in China or over in somewhere yep, in Europe, yep. and then all of a sudden, we're virtual, and I was so confused the entire time. I was yeah. just like, what's going on? We didn't necessarily get uh, how to manage uh, students the best way. And, uh, you know, whether it was virtual, coming back, masking, uh, I think we've learned a lot about the next one, how to better understand how to manage kids in schools. People went from going up to hugging people, just saying <laughs> hi, yeah, <that's laughs> touching. to like six feet away. And then yeah. people can just advance really quickly by creating online sites where you can talk to somebody around the Zoom. world. Yeah, Zoom. and like just have meetings. Socializing is an important part of like growing up, mm -hmm. interacting with people. So like when you like don't socialize and then come back to school, like you wow. know, it seems harder to do that. The, you, you're exactly right. Socialization is such a big part of what you guys do in school. And to take that away was a real problem. And I don't think any of us recognized how bad that would be. We now know it's better to keep kids in school almost no matter what. But so again, that you know, if you think about the mistakes made, we would do more, I think, in the future to try and make sure the kids stay in school. But, but we're, that's one of the reasons we're so proud of you is we, we're very committed to the, how you learn and, and we try to make sure that you, you know, you're really well prepared to be in the health professions. So how great was that? I hope you all really enjoyed meeting all these wonderful young kids. Uh, but I want to thank in particular Mr. Gonzalez, the principal, Ms. Harris, the dean of instruction, and all the student ambassadors that you got to meet. So what a great trip. I really enjoyed it. Can't wait to see him next year. But I want to close today with a few shout outs. First, May is Skin Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, there are more than 5 million cases of skin cancer diagnosed in the, in the uh, United States each year. Uh, it's the most common form of cancer in America, and is, obviously it's preventable by using sunscreen and also getting routine skin checks. We all need to do that, especially for those who love to be outside. I want to congratulate uh, Dr. Nadia Ismail and Dr. Uh, Fasia Conwell, who've been accepted into the class of fellows in the Hedwig Van Amerigen Executive Leadership in Academic Medicine Program. This program offers an intensive one-year fellowship of leadership training to prepare women for leadership in academic medicine, dentistry, public health, and pharmacy. And of course, this Monday, I'm really excited. We're having our graduation for medical students, graduate students in genetic counseling. 
They're going to receive their degrees and begin their careers not soon enough in healthcare. And so we're really excited about, uh, about that. I mean, these kids have gone through medical school and graduate school and health profession school in the middle of a global pandemic. So congratulations to all of them and to all of you who did it. Anyway, have a wonderful weekend. I can't wait to see you next week.